So the work on show here has been made over the past year while I've been graduate maker in residence in the painting department here at Gray School of Art. Uh, the starting point for this work, much like most of the work I've been doing for the last few years since graduating, is, is the idea of what to make. Um, I love making things and I always will make things and, and that's sort of a decision which I, which I feel quite comfortable with. Um, but I think when we go beyond that, we know that's a fact. The, there's, a, there's an interesting game that can be had when we sort of discuss what it is that we do want to make. And I, I suppose the result of that question, my answer of that question, is to put myself in a situation where I don't really know what the end result's going to be. Or I put myself in a situation where uh, the decision of what to make is maybe made for me. Um, so generally speaking, uh, what I've done here is that maybe half of the pieces in the show, about five of them, actually relate to uh, the biblical poem of the of the creation story, and uh, which I think is maybe quite a sort of a cheeky play um, because uh, the idea that each day that something was made. So uh, if I make a painting from each day, the decision of what to make or the content of what to make is already made for me. So uh, I mean, there are no way literal representations of, of each day of the story. Um, if you look at certain pieces in particular, if you, if, knowing what each day is about and seeing what the image is at the end, they're clearly not depictions of the story, but it's, it's about having a decision made for me. And my, the, my process, how I sort of go about discovering an image, is I either work with, uh, through newspaper, printed media, or I make drawings myself, or I take photographs uh, myself. And I sort of, it's about taking lots of separate images and, and making it, see how they can fit together, making them fit together. Um, which in itself is, is quite a sort, of a, a sort of a game I play with myself. It's, it's, it's a sort of a sense of discovery. Um, and it's quite, when I actually, the process I go through, it's quite an excited sort of sense of discovery, making things fit, seeing how they fit together um, and discovering image in it. The idea of how things fit, I think, relates to my process, you know, what to make. There's the question, like we said. But it's not only what does the image look like, it's also the physicality of the piece. You know, so the relationship between the image, the painting, and the frame, and the frame and the wall, all are other parts which, which I feel like I want to sort of, not necessarily justify, but I want to sort of work out why it is I do that. Um, and the actual physical relationship between these little elements in the painting, how they actually sit together, making them fit the actual physical finish. I often tend to sort of have this a really soft edge between them, so that when you get up close, the sort of the payoff of seeing the, the painting up close is that this, the actual elements in the painting actually feel like they fit together as well. It's not just visually on the plane, it's actually they, they overlap and they fit. Um, and that's what I do. I mean, the work was done over this whole last year, um, and I made a, around about 16 pieces this past year. And the, the show came about really, I suppose, as a, as, a, as a sort of a marker for the end of my time as the graduate in residence. Um, and it, it so happens we, we ended up hanging nine in the show, but we had six to choose from. It. And we basically, and it wasn't because the other ones that didn't make it in, I didn't feel were as strong paintings, but I, I think this was really the, the hang which which worked best, which was most engaging, hopefully most interesting, or kind of or worked, or or, dis, or there was a dialogue between pieces, which is slightly richer. This was the most, the sort of the, the best time we could go for. Um, but I think, yeah, I mean, I think the work the work was available, and then and then we decided to plan a show afterwards. And we should maybe look at a couple of things particularly. So this this piece I called uh, titled the Crucifixion, um, and many pieces that I do can often be about more of the formal game of how you got making a painting, um, just the physicality of it. But I think in this piece there's maybe more that I'm exploring an idea in the actual image of the piece as well. Um, 
you can see obviously the, the relationship between the frame and the image like I was talking about before is always incredibly important but conceptually in this piece what I was thinking about is um, and there's, there's obviously several depictions of the crucifixion um, and they offer very different things and there's three in particular which I quite enjoy so one being uh, Matthias Grunewald's depiction the Eisenhower altarpiece which is in Colmar um, another one being Salvador Dali's depiction which is in the Met in New York and another one of Raphael's in the National Gallery in London and I think each these are three very different depictions of the same uh, same story, same event um, and they often very differently so in Grunewald's uh, painting what you have is you have this sort of uh, Christ as a man who is broken, who has been tortured and it's, it's quite a sort of a, a savage quite gnarly painting and in uh, in Dali's painting, which was actually made in response to Grunewald's one, you have the complete opposite. Dali wants to make the most beautiful image ever made, uh, and, and you have you have Christ floating off the cross, um, almost in, a, in an incredibly feminine form, uh, incredibly smooth skin, uh, very beautiful, very elegant. Quite the opposite, maybe more akin to the idea of, of Christ as the Son of God. And I sort of thought when making this image, here you have these very separate depictions but how do they relate to each other? If it's the same idea, you know, how, how are two very different ideas brought together? And what I try to do is take elements from each of these three paintings and paint sections of them together in, in order to see how they fit with each other. Which in a way, I sort of maybe concede that rather than getting an essence of, close to the essence of the idea, maybe I've diluted all three of the ideas down. But I still felt the need that I really want to sort of push on and, and try and see how, how they do actually relate to each other. Um, and I think as well in the actual, the actual physical shape, I, mean, I, I was quite keen to keep it quite, you know, quite decorative, quite regal in a sense, but I also, I mean, the, the, uh, Rembrandt and, and Bacon and other people since then ha have famously depicted uh, kind of animal carcasses, cow carcasses, which have this nod to the crucifixion. And I was quite keen, although it's, I mean, not, it's not in any way a dark painting, I don't think it's particularly morbid, but I was quite keen for the actual image to maybe nod to that idea of this carcass or, or, or of this sort of the crucifixion scene with there being the sort of the shapes of the limbs. Um, yeah, and, but I'm always keen, whenever I'm making things, I'm always keen that, the, that it's still a visual thing. I mean, the, the idea is always important to me. It's a, like I said, it's about just you know, what to make. The idea is always incredibly important. But I always I acknowledge that painting is a visual thing, and you and you don't you don't want the idea to be held, you know, or you don't want the visual to be held back by the idea in the same way that you don't want the the idea to be held by the by the visual. You want them sort of there's a balance between the two, um, and the actual physical image of it. I'm always been I have these two uh, sort of. I don't know why, how I would call them, but these two sides, uh, which, which I'm always in, I always try to have in balance. One which I call visual honesty, and one which I call visual opportunity. And visual honesty would be paint being paint, just sort of showing off and enjoying what paint naturally does. So applying it thick, applying it thin, um, just really sort of getting in there and just allowing it to be just the, the physical quality of the paint. But then on the other side of that as well is that if you paint, if you mix paint, excuse me, in a certain way you can give the illusion of a space or of something else. And that might be an example of visual opportunity. So all the time, in all, in all the works I do here, I try and keep both these things in balance. So the, the honesty of paint doing what it does alongside the opportunity of allowing paint to do what it's capable of doing. So it's just, it, 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 it's a pretty important thing, I think, within the work that I do. <laughs> it's, been, it's been very interesting being back and, and not because I'm obviously not, I'm back but not a student and I'm also, I'm not a tutor either, I'm somewhere in between and it's been quite an interesting, it's been a very interesting position to be in. Uh, it's been, you know, it's been wonderful speaking to students and speaking to st staff and being kind of uh, neither way but it's been very interesting to be back, I mean the last almost five years I've been painting by myself, kind of for myself for other shows. I've not really been in, in, a, in a big group kind of academic or institution sort of environment. And being sort of back in that sort of uh, position where everyone around you is making things, and that it, it's been it's it's been incredibly sort of motivating. I mean, I never need motivation to paint. I always love to paint, but it's been something quite quite wonderful. But being being put back in, and my studio space being in with the students as well, it's been quite wonderful. Um, and hopefully, I, it's been it, you know me being here has been useful for the school and for the department. Um, I was quite keen, you know, from being here that I didn't. 
I didn't want, you know, when I left at the end of the year, people to sort of, uh, like, who was that guy? You know, I kind of wanted people to know, because, I mean, I want to know who people are, and hopefully you know, I want them to get to know me and feel that they're able to ask me about my, my work. Um, so I think, yeah, just sort of being, being back in, in the Greys community, which, which I think, it, you know, which is what I think Greys is famed for, has been an incredibly, you know, rich opportunity for me. Um, and also having the workshops at my disposal as well, having the technology things which I haven't had in the last few years, jobs that I've, that I've had, I, that I've had to spend weeks on the last few years, I've, I've been able to do in a few days because we have so much better facilities here. Um, so it's made the actual making process a lot easier for me as well. So the, uh, well, the title of this piece for a start is Day 4 uh, Sunday and um, again it has this sort of reference to the, the biblical poem. Um, I, I should probably mention that the, the reason that, that it's Day 4 Sunday, um, there's been some confusion as to why, they, why they are the days they are and that references to the fact that the, the images were taken from, from newspaper clippings and what I did was I, I, I bought a newspaper over, over a period of a week, consecutive days and I happened to start the project on a Thursday, which then ends up that day four becomes a Sunday. Um, and the images for, were, what I did was I looked for the images uh, which related to that day's story, that part of the, of, the, of the story, that day's story in the paper, which then I could then collage and make the image from. Uh, so that's, that's, that accounts for that. Um, I was mentioning before that, that it's really important to me the relationship between um, between the elements, how things fit together, and I was saying frame and canvas and, and canvas and wall, uh, and I think this is an example of that, whereby the, the frame itself, which is handmade and hand-painted, uh, is incredibly important to the piece, and I think if you took away the frame, the piece, in fact, might be quite dull. So what you might have is, for example, certain things that the actual shape might marry, might relate, might play off certain shapes that you find in some of the some image. You have a star in the content of the image and you have stars in the surface. So the actual the actual frame of the piece and the canvas are are one. And I've made other pieces before whereby parts of the parts of the wall are physically painted on for the for the paint to be mounted on. So the, how the actual wall relates to the image as well. Um, I think the idea of, of handmade is quite is quite important to me. Um, I, I don't feel the pressure. Everything has to be handmade, and I don't think that technology isn't good. I don't think that uh, making life easier for you, you know, using ways to make things easier for you isn't isn't relevant, isn't important. Because I mean, this is all made with machinery, with tools. But I think there's, I still enjoy a certain degree a handmade quality of it. And you can even see, like in the fact of the, the title of the show, I mean, that could have been that could have been done with a with a laser cutter. It could have been stenciled on. It could be done in a number of ways. But I, I actually chose to hand paint it, uh, and it's just sort of part of part of the way I like to go about doing things. Tell us about the title of the show. Um, it's it's actually the. It came, I mean, the back forward relates actually to one of the paintings which is in the show. Um, so the again is a sort of a bit of a play on that that um, I almost actually had back forward painting hung here and then back forward again as like a little play. But I also think as well as, as well as it being a piece in the show, I think it relates to the idea of me being back at Grey's, this idea of sort of being back here, but it's, I'm actually going forward, I'm sort of my, as I've sort of been through, sort of had some time out after being at Grey's, I'm sort of actually going forward and hopefully making more interesting work. So I was quite keen to sort of have that in, embedded within, within the title. I think part of the, another idea which I think is quite important to me is, n is never really to be too precious with things. Um, I use quite a lot of precious materials in the paintings I make, so the gold leaf features quite a lot, which I suppose relates to my interest in, in, in icon paintings. Um, but, but I'm never, it's never necessarily, I mean, in, the way I apply gold leaf is not necessarily how academically or how, how a purist how would apply it. You know, it's meant to be applied with a crimson underlayer, an ochre underlayer, and applied on in sheets, whereas the way I apply it, I use a, a grey under, undertone. I like to show off the cracks and I don't apply it on in square sheets. I actually tear up the little sheets and, and, and make it quite an organic sort of surface. So it's, it's not so much done the way it's meant to be. And in this piece here as well, the actual, the underlayer here is silver leafed, which I then painted over the top. So I'm never, although it's a semi-precious surface, I'm not really afraid to uh, be restricted by that and then sort of uh, protect it. I'm, I'm happy to sort of paint over it and in a sense almost destroy it, which I think is an, a quite an important thing when you go about making a painting. I think you have to have that freedom that you're not going to be held back by certain bits that look right or look good or are precious. I think you have to 
just be objective about what it is you've made. So this piece is called Reverse Alchemy. So if, if alchemy is the idea of taking base metals and making them into gold, uh, this is in fact sort of the opposite. And what I did was I started with, with images of gold or, or of images which included a great amount of gold. And I, went, I worked backwards. I, I started with gold and through collaging these images together, finding the, maybe the essence of this idea, I sort of in fact ended up with an image that wasn't gold. Um, and I think where I was talking before about, okay, we have the content of the image of, of what the image is about, but also being aware of the surface, the physicality, the material. And I think in this one, it's quite subtle to see it, but there's actually transparent layer of stars which is put over the whole thing. So when, it's a subtle play where you can't really see it when you're seeing the painting as a whole. But when you come up, when you walk past under certain light, you get that sort of glimmer of that surface. Again, it's that other sort of, that payoff, trying to make the experience of looking at it as rich as it can be. Um, funnily enough, actually, the, the, uh, originally I had, I had thought of hanging this piece as a vertical and it was only when I actually came to sort of um, hanging the show and with, uh, through discussions with the head of painting, Keith Grant, that we decided to have it, hang it as, as a vertical and I think, uh, uh, sorry, as a horizontal, excuse me. Um, and I think as a vertical it read quite, it, it was more simple. I think you, you kind of looked at it and you kind of got it quite quickly uh, and you moved on, which, which makes great sense. Um, and that's fine, but I think what I always hope to do is make paintings that you can, by spending more time on, you can get to know and you can keep discovering more things and you can actually have sort of a relationship with and maybe they burn slightly slower. Um, and I think actually by hanging it on the, on the horizontal, hopefully I think it does that in a sense. Um, I'm always sort of aware as well that it, when I make paintings that there's awkwardness has quite a lot to do with it. Uh, and funnily enough, um, awkwardness, it's not that I'm, I intend to make awkward because in fact the, the whole point of what I'm doing is making things fit, it's about justifying where things are, uh, understanding where things are. And I think as a process of them being more comfortable for me and, and, and understanding why they are where they are, I end up with something which could, end, which could feel quite awkward. So I, I remember my degree show a few years ago, I didn't really like the hanging fittings of, of mirror plates. So I didn't really get the relationship between the wall and the canvas and these in between. Um, and what I used to do is I'd have, I'd have this, the, the, this sort of rectangular form and then what I would, I would build a couple of pieces on the side which uh, Keith used to call lugs, like little ears. And I used to put the screws through the painting into the wall because that sort of made sense to me. But there was in fact a kind of a, an inherent awkwardness in that. You had this clean rectangle which was broken by these two bits hanging on the end. So, it, so through a desire to make it more comfortable, to make it make sense, to make it fit, I ended up making something which was in, in a way a little bit more awkward, which I think is quite a, sort of a, a funny sort of play really. And I, I think a lot of my work, it maybe doesn't uh, appear straight off, it might feel quite reflective or quite quiet, but most of the time when I'm making my work, I'm, I'm almost having a little dig at myself. I, I like to sort of set up a set of rules, keep things quite restrictive, and, and then allow myself to break those rules. And, and like I say, although you might not pick them up as a viewer, I think I sort of, I'm quite content to sort of poke a little bit of fun at myself in making painting. And I think that's really what I mean. What this whole show is about is about me just enjoying making things. That's what I love to do. And it's kind of a discussion with myself and with other people about what it is that I want to make and, and how we can go making things and how to make things interesting. And I think that the idea of this, it, it is a fun process for me. I absolutely love it. And I think that's hopefully comes across in certain elements so that they maybe can feel slightly cheeky in a way. Um, yeah. I suppose, yeah, I, I suppose so. I mean, I think, I mean, I have been five years out, but I think really what's been going on the last few years is, is, is thinking back and assessing what it actually was that went on when I was here. Uh, because everything all happened so quickly, you know, the four years were up, so, you know, is, we learned so much in such a short space of time that um, many of the things that the tutor said to me when I was here, I, I wasn't maybe quite in the space to quite, I didn't quite get that or I wasn't quite able to take that on at the time, but subsequently from being away, from being at other exhibitions, doing more reading, making more work, I've sort of been, I was like, you know, I sort of, I get where they were going with that, I understand what they meant, and I'm now even able to apply some of the things that they said before now to the work I'm making. Um, 
And yeah, I think, and I think partly being back in this environment, you know, and, and overhearing discussions between tutors and students and other students' work, and them asking me questions about my work and about other other ways of making things. Um, I think that's that's absolutely uh, helped me to sort of process my own thoughts as well. You know, there's there's no better way I think of understanding what you're doing and getting getting it clean your mind what you're about than actually speaking to people about what you think it's about. So uh, absolutely, it's been it's been incredibly useful in that respect as well. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I do, I do because I think if it, if it was just enough to, to talk about the idea, you know, I could just write it down or I could do it in another form. But I, I I think the idea needs to be needs to be made. That's what it is. It's a, it's a it's like an idea I've made it put into practice. So I, yeah, I think through the process of actually physically making, I'm able to sort of have that discussion that I'm having in my head, you know, and actually sort of realizing and sort of solving the problems that I give for myself and working it out. So yeah, I, th I think that the physical making is like m me having a discussion. Absolutely. Probably the kind of thing. Much like when I was here at Grace before, I needed to have the time away to reflect on it as well. I mean, I'm sure when I leave here again, I'll reflect on this past year as well, and certain things will have been unlocked. But I think definitely, I, mean, I don't think you can go into a place as sort of visually rich as an art school and, and not have that be, be absorbed into the work that you're doing, you know, and you see all these students being so ambitious and being and getting so excited and being so, you know, so creative, and that's absolutely going to rub off and, and make me want to be more ambitious in what I'm doing, however that might be. Um, absolutely, yeah, no, I think it has, I think it has pushed me on, definitely, yeah. yeah. It's funny because I sort of don't think I'm in much of a position to give advice, but I suppose, um, I suppose thinking about Think about the, the, the day when you when you, you actually the day before you or that your degree is about to open. You get your envelope which says your the result that you've had. Um, I think you know getting a degree is it's a big deal. You know not everyone thinks it's a big deal, but I think it's a big deal and it means a lot. And I sort of I'm of the mind that I, I really I I guess I want to encourage anyone to really give as give as much time that they can afford to the course that they can give give the, the, the monetary resource that they can afford to the course, give all the energy they can to the course, so that on the day that you actually get your result, whatever it says on the piece of paper, you can be really proud knowing that you gave absolutely everything into the course and the result that you've got is the best that you can do. And then and you can, you can you can be really, really proud of what you've got. Because I kind of think that if you're going to come to art school and you're kind of going to do it, you know, you might as well do it the best that you can do it. You won't ever do your undergraduate again. It's a one-time thing. So really, you know, get the most out of it and be, and, and be very proud. I suppose that's... Yeah, I suppose that's all I, that's all I would say, yeah. Probably waffled quite enough, actually. Um, no, I think that's probably a pretty good introduction, I think. I think so. Yeah.